going to, some of them is going to be a big factor for players. But when you get out there on the longer ones, it's uh, going to become a bigger factor, I think, as the college game wears on. Robbie James will hold, and it's the first time I've seen him in the game today. Normally, Mark Henry is the holder. The short snapper is Jay Lewenberg. Good snap, good hold, blocked! Oh, oh it's it's barely blocked. It's going to advance this way back to the 50-yard line, and here comes somebody from Baylor. Baylor can advance it. Baylor can advance the ball. Hand has the football all the way to the Colorado 30. What a play! What a turnaround in the ball game. What a turnaround in the ball game. That big play. What a block. And I'm going to tell you, the nation's longest winning streak is in threat right now. Here's a block right up the middle. Was it because he kicked it low? They got penetration up through the middle. Big block in there. Number 30. I'm, let's see if we can see this angle. See who got the block coming up through the middle there. Right there. I thought it was a 30 number. I thought it might have been 37. 77 could have been Dotson. It could have been 77 in there. Whoever it was, that's the biggest play of this football game from Baylor's standpoint. Now, they're in a position, a couple first downs. They could use up the clock and kick the field goal away. What a turn of events. Unbelievable. You rarely see the ball move that far on a block. That thing shot out of there about 50 yards. Sweep to Mims. Mims has the corner. He's to the 25 and the 20 inside the 20 to the 18 yard line. Mims got a first down. A great effort by Mims. I'll tell you, a very intelligent play by a wide receiver out here. And uh, very possibly may have been Bonner by not making a block. Keeps from making a block. Well, we're going to see it. You know, we... He laid off making a block to keep from making a clip on the play. And Mims has done the unusual against Colorado. The remarkable. He has got over 100 yards. He has 103 unofficially. First and 10 at the 18. They give to straight. And eight battles to the 15-yard line. The clock continues to move inside 250. And a point you made during our timeout was that uh, Colorado burned the timeout instead of taking the five-yard penalty. Now they only have two. That came off them. They may need it if uh, Baylor puts points on the scoreboard here. With not much time to go in the ball game. Of course, Baylor now wants to use the clock. Now, in a pro situation, this is when defensive teams will take their timeouts and try to give time for their offense to use the have some time on the clock. Second down and eight. Mims behind straight in the eye. Long count for Joe. He'll keep it. He's got some running room. He'll get down to the 12 yard line. John Knudsen made the tackle. The true freshman from Great Falls, Montana. See, now Colorado with their two timeouts should use a timeout. We're going to let the clock time run off this clock. And if Baylor should kick this field goal and make it, if they don't score, they will have what time left to come back down and score. If they use their timeouts, then you got a different situation. You're going to give your offense a chance. Well, of course, they're milking the clock right now. And also on third down and three, I would think they're going to try to run right here and to get in the center of the field if they're short of the first down for the field goal try. Well, this is probably going to be Joe keeping the ball because they don't want any ball having opportunities. They give to straight, and he'll be close to a first down. Uh-oh, late flag come in here. Late flag, let's we'll see what he's got. <laughs> and it's a motion penalty, so they'll walk off five against Baylor. And straight had gotten it very close to the eight-yard line, and he needed to get the ball across, but that is a moot point right now. Clock is stopped, 127 left in the football game. If you're just joining us, Colorado leads at 14 to 13. They were lined up to kick a 24-yard field goal a moment ago. They had it blocked, and it shot about 50 yards towards Colorado's end zone. It was scooped up by Brian Hand, and he ran it down the 30-yard line. And Baylor now in a position to go ahead with 127 left. Big discussion down there was where they wanted to take this penalty or not because they become very aware of the clock. Now, of course, they're going to give Baylor another play. You know, run some time off the clock. And I would assume that after this play, Colorado will take a timeout to give their offense some chance to have some time to go back down and maybe get field goal position. Should Baylor make this field goal? Baylor, not that they'll use it right now, obviously, has one timeout remaining. And they crank up the clock. 
don't like to second guess that, but with two minutes to go, it was rather obvious that Baylor wanted to be in a position to kick this field goal. Now, if they kick the field goal and make it, they don't make it, it's obviously irrelevant. But if they make this field goal, they go up 16 to 14. But now, if they make this field goal, Colorado's only going to hit about 50 seconds left on the clock. If they had used their timeouts, they'd have probably had a minute and 40 or 45 seconds to go for their offense. They get the opportunity maybe to get the field goal range. Ireland has kicked one for 41 yards earlier today. This one will be about a 36-yarder. It'll have to push it a little bit. From close to the near hash mark. The snapper is Matt Gant, the holder, Kent Brentham. And Colorado has already blocked the field goal in about the same position in the here we go. This could very well be the ball game. 36 yards away, Jeff Ireland. Good snap, good hold. It's up. It's good. Jeff Ireland's put Baylor on top by two. 51 seconds remain for McCartney's Buffaloes in the longest win streak in the nation. 16-14, we'll come back, the final 51 ticks after this. It's blocked, and the next time the ball is snapped, it's at the Colorado 30, and all Baylor has to do is move the football a little bit, and they do that, and they kick a 36-yarder. Jeff Ireland got plenty of height, got it right through. And Baylor now with a chance to win the football game. Up by 2, 16, 14 with 51 seconds left. Yeah, this kickoff play will take probably 8 or 9 seconds, everything being normal. So we're probably going to have 42 or 43 seconds to go here with one timeout left. And Ireland, oh boy. He kicks it right out of the end zone. Is he has a strong leg or what? So Colorado trailing by 2. A field goal obviously is all they but they'll start from their own 20, and they'll have 51 seconds with which to move it. And you know Baylor is going to put their ears back and fly after Darian Hagan. Well, if you're interested in, in Harper's longest field goal, it was 54 yards in his career. So that means that they've got to get down to about the, you know, maybe 35-yard line of Baylor. So you're looking at about needing 45 yards for him to have a temp for his longest field goal. Hagan's got time, he wants to get a bunch, and Rico Smith is double covered. That's not really a smart throw, you're not going to get it all at once, you got to try to get chunks of it. Yeah, I would, uh, you know, with college football, the fact that they stopped the clock after every first down, you can afford the throw, especially when you only get to about, oh, we're looking at about probably 45 yards. So, you know, three 15-yard passes in that middle area, when they stop the clock and move the chain, Second and ten, Hagen with time, now it's breaking down and Hagen's hit from behind and did well to hold on to the football, Robin Jones got him, clock keeps moving. Colorado only had two receivers out on that play, they were covered, double cover, every one of them, he had absolutely no one to go to. And now Colorado calls a timeout, they wasted ten seconds on the clock in getting that timeout down, they have one left, and again, they blew ten seconds after the sack getting together. They, you know, I think that's their last time, and I think they used the timeout with the field goal. They got them for the field goal here before. Now that's their last time. I don't think they have any timeouts left. You're right, the scoreboard was wrong, and now the scoreboard is corrected. There are no timeouts left. 25 seconds left, and Colorado has gone backwards in two ways, one yard. And I have pointed to this before during Oklahoma's day day when they go down and play Miami, sometimes for a national championship. Whenever they get behind late in the ball game, it's very difficult for an option team to pull the ball. They very rarely, rarely have drop back series. No, no question of that. From Baylor's standpoint, this is going to be the, one of the biggest wins that they can hold on for 25 seconds here that they've had in a long time. And obviously, their people are going to be sitting back here off the deep. Hagan has to throw this one this time. He can't take a, he can't take a sack. He's got to throw it up in the air. Sometimes that when you really get cheap intercept interceptions. Third down throw. A 
They sent four out, now five out this time. Hagan has a man. It's caught in midfield. Oh, 17 seconds left. Charles Johnson hauled it in. And now Colorado is looking at a 15, 18 yard completion. And they couldn't get a field goal attempt. They got plenty of time to do it with 17 seconds. They can throw that ball in the middle. And then you can line up and stop the clock by dropping it to give the field goal kicker the opportunity. Folks, if you're not enjoying this one, life can't be too good right now. Oh, that's a little messed up now. They got people running in and out. Four receivers now at the top of the screen. Hagan, he's got time. Now he jumps in the other way to Brown. Brown get out of bounds and he'll pick up five yards. It only took six seconds. That didn't, that didn't help the situation much because that five, that five yard gain took some time off the clock. They need only 11 seconds to go in the ball game now. And again, they have to work the sidelines. They can't call timeout to get the field goal unit on the field. Of course, they can spike the ball, but I think you're looking at really one play here that they need to pick up 10 yards. 10 yards would be a 52-yard attempt. And your field goal team has to be ready on the sideline to run out and get on that field. They're running players in and out. Is this some kind of football game? 16-14, Baylor, 11 seconds left. Hey, gets using a lot of time. It's picked off, and that'll seal it. 37, Frankie Smith, one second left. Baylor has cut north and shot the Buffaloes. That was an overthrow because Hagan did have a man open on the sideline. Yeah, that was a, uh, he has to throw the ball in that, in that situation, and that basically, that, that type of, looks like he's open down in there, take a look at Henry, he's gonna go down now, he wants to work kind of out to the outside because he wants to get out of bounds, he is open, the ball is just throw a little bit to the inside and over the floor, and that's what you call an inherited interception, and of course with one second, obviously, Baylor's just gonna lay down on the ball, and, what a happy plane ride back to Waco, Texas. This is going to be for those Baylor Bears. Well, I think back 1969, George Allen hired a special teams coach by the name of Dick Vermeil. He was the first guy in the National Football League to do it. They said, why a special teams coach? Well, we learned today. Block field goal. The difference in this football game is Baylor, the 23rd ranked team in the country, has knocked off number 12, Colorado, the defending national champions, 16-14. You talk about a happy dressing room. That's the scene that you've just seen to open our show. We were, of course, in Boulder, Colorado, taking on the defending national champions, those Colorado Buffaloes, coached by Bill McCartney and a great coaching staff. And our players uh, went up with the attitude that they could win, and uh, they did everything that it took to win. Uh, we made a lot of mistakes, but so did Colorado. But both teams played hard and aggressively, and it was really a great college football game. All the fans seemed to enjoy it a lot. I certainly enjoyed the end a lot more because we did win the football game. But it was an exciting trip for our uh, team, and uh, our players and our coaching staff had worked hard to try to go up and compete with those uh, Buffaloes, and we were able to do so. Had a great group of fans that followed us up there, and at the conclusion of the show, I want to show you some fans that met us at home. But in the meantime now, we're going to pause for a moment, and then we're going to come back and look at the highlights of the Baylor Colorado football game. Rocky Mountain High. High. Baylor Colorado, September the 15th, 1991. The Baylor Bears went up to the high country to play uh, the defending national champions, the Colorado Buffaloes. And uh, boy, are they a fine football team. Coach Bill McCartney has done one outstanding job in building a program there at the University of Colorado. 
the Bears were uh, there to uh, challenge these guys on their home field, and the uh, kickoff started the action. Uh, you are uh, looking at uh, the Baylor team and the uh, live shirt, and we're going uh, what would be to the south of the stadium. The wind was swirling around uh, from the west, and it actually came at you from both ends of the field. J.J. Joe is the quarterback, uh, straight the uh, fullback. And number one there is Lee Miles, and that's a 10-yard gain for a very big first down and an opening drive. J.J. running the option pass as we've driven on down the field. Uh, Overthrew the receiver, and the ball was intercepted by Thomas of CU. Our defense takes the field for the first time. Santana Dotson, number 77, pursuing. And, of course, uh, that young man right there, Robin Jones, made the big stop on a long third down. The ball was actually dropped uh, by a punter. He picked it up, got off a very good kick. This young man is extremely dangerous, Dan Hagen. And uh, we worked hard all week long on that. And we get a little better, interestingly, as the game goes on. Uh, now it's another possession, and uh, Hagen is at the quarterback. It's a third down situation, and he throws a completed pass. A very, very nice throw and catch on that, Ed for the big first down. They move down to the water goal line. Uh, they uh, jump off sides here and do not get the snap, and we recover the fumble. And this is a very important uh, play because it uh, kept them from getting any points on the board, and it was a two-point ball game at the end. Uh, here you can see uh, the center uh, took off early, snapped the ball, missed the quarterback, and uh, we recover. Uh, that was covered by Hafford. Number 66, one of our defensive linebackers. In motion is the tight end. Ball is thrown uh, outside to uh, uh, Miller. And Miller makes a big first down play. We're coming off our own goal line. That was a very, very important reception by Reggie Miller. This is the third and six. Very important. And uh, this young man right here, David Mims, uh, had a big day against the Buffaloes. He had 109 yards. There he got his ankle hurt. Accidental hit out of bounds. And uh, he uh, was only out for a couple of three plays and was able to come back. But he made more yardage against the fine Buffalo defense than anyone since Rocket Ishmael a couple of years ago. Rocket had uh, 100 yards rushing. He was, of course, from Notre Dame. Now, here we see uh, Colorado taking over again. Darren Hagen throwing across the middle. Ball is uh, complete to the big tight end. Uh, he made a good, strong, concerted effort on his run, picked up some extra yardage there. Marcus Lowe, Santana Dotson, the tackles. The ends out there, Albert Fontenot and Robin Jones. And uh, you see us knocking each other down, uh, down in the uh, secondary. The tight end on a crossing route. Uh, Hagen hit him perfectly. They go in. Score the touchdown, kick the extra point, and we find it 7-0. to Now they're going south. We take the ball here and almost uh, make a mistake. Uh, we really bring it out, and we end up with very poor field position. We did have uh, the most uh, time with the ball in possession in the first half, and that was very helpful for us. This is the option play executed by J.J. Joe. Uh, picks up about uh, 26, 27 yards, and he was hit laid out of bounds, and so there is a uh, penalty on the play, another 15 yards. You're seeing uh, what we refer to as a stack eye. That's a little unusual in modern-day football when you see mostly one backs, uh, you see three backs lined up. Ball thrown uh, to that uh, one of the eye backs uh, for a big first down. This is third and three. We're driving down to the 20-yard line, or 18, actually. Motion again. There's a reverse play, and they uh, really uh, had it uh, pegged pretty good. They did a good job uh, picking it up. Uh, Miles scored last week against the University of Texas El Paso on the same play, and the Buffaloes are a great defense, and they weren't going to let that happen. Jeff Ireland kicks this one right straight through those narrow uprights. Remember, they're five feet shorter, or more narrow than they were a year ago. Score now 7-3 with 10.04 left in the second quarter. Ireland kicking off, and I must say that this young man did a superb job all afternoon long. <clears throat> As a matter of fact, that I think was his shortest kick. They ranged from three uh, yards into the end zone 
to three yards out of the end zone. Here's the option play, and he's well covered. Uh, that uh, young man there, Brian Hand, number 47, had a very fine game. Uh, Coach Gooden and I, the linebacker coach, were talk talking today. Uh, but this young man, Brian Hand, is one of the most underrated players we have. He does a great job. Colorado's a very aggressive football team, very tough. It was a couple of heavyweights uh, slamming away at each other, as you can see. Let us slide a hand right here. McKenzie uh, catching the ball. And again, uh, hit out of bounds. I'm sorry, that was, uh, again, Alonzo Pierce, not McKenzie. And another 15-yard penalty. Motion by McKenzie now. Trying to run an option outside, and uh, we uh, didn't uh, block it right, execute it right, or anything else, and that's usually the end result. You uh, lose yardage. So we're forced to punt, and uh, we get a, a very poor punt, uh, only about a 15-yarder, and uh, they set up uh, camp ready to go uh, somewhere on about their 26 or 7-yard line. Yeah, just keeps walking there, 27-yard line. Now they're in motion. And Hagen, the quarterback, uh, secondary, uh, had an excellent game. Uh, this is one of the fine interceptions you'll ever see right there. Allison is a great player. Number four, also number 37, Smith. Outstanding job. Number three, uh, Keith Caldwell. Outstanding job. Yeah, I tell you, that is a great interception. Great football. Second down and 10, Baylor Bears uh, coming down, trying to get points on the board. This is before halftime, well-executed play. Uh, Mims uh, caught up with the outside blocker, and he's telling him, uh, uh, give me a little bit more of a crease out here, and we'll make some yardage. There's a bootleg play, a big John Turnpaw pulling out. Pass is complete uh, out there to Stutzman. Stutzman number 80, senior, an outstanding player for us, uh, made the catch coming across the middle. Third down and 11, another big third down play for the Baylor Bears. Uh, still up uh, seven to three. It was a draw play to a quarterback uh, picked up all but one yard uh, after the spot. All but one yard for the first down. So we're gonna go for the first down, execute the option, pick up eight yards. Very, very fine execution by J.J. Joe. David Mims, Robert Strait in that same backfield. Scott Barron's uh, snapping on that, and uh, he had a hurt ankle and got to snap high. I uh, don't have time to explain why a hurt ankle would uh, uh, cause him to snap high, but he did. And now that's the halftime, and we'll be back in just a moment. <laughs> University of Colorado had won the uh, opening toss. Uh, they deferred, so it was their choice the second half, and they wanted to receive the ball, and there's another one of those great island kicks. That's five yards into the end zone. Now they take up uh, residence on the 20. They move out, get uh, two first downs out to the 40-yard line. And now this is for another uh, first down, and it was a quarterback sneak. Uh, turns on the spot. Here it comes right now, fourth and one. And uh, your guess is as good as mine. Those uh, officials have to go in there and make a decision, and they do a great job. It's a well-officiated ball game. And Hagen fumbled there, and uh, they did get it back, so they were able to uh, uh, punt. We didn't get possession uh, down deep in their territory. Lee Miles, the punt returner for Baylor. They get a good high kick. Comes up short for the short man, and uh, Smith, Frank Smith, uh, gives a fair catch and uh, handles the ball. We want possession. Here comes the option pass. This is the first play for Baylor in the second half, and their secondary have been coming up very, very hard against the run, and that's one of the dangers uh, when you have the kind of receivers we have. If the secondary wants to play the run too hard, then uh, we elect to throw. J.J. Joe had uh, about 235 yards passing, and this one touchdown 74 yards, and this guy is tall and can fly. And um, there's not many people that can catch him in a straight race. He's got great speed. That's Melvin Bonner. Here's another shot of it. J.J. Joe unloaded it. He even got a pretty good little spiral on it there, right into the hands and a big touchdown. 
we of course kick the extra point and uh, then that uh, brings the score 10 to 7. Baylor's favor now over Colorado, 10-23 left in the third quarter. Aaron Hagan sets up camp, tries to throw, trying to do a bootleg there. Watch this defense, great defense. Knock that ball loose. Keith Caldwell, thank you, Smith. Hunt, this one is uh, given a fair catch sign by Lee Nice. He was not happy with himself. There was a crease. He had a chance to make a few yards, but he made a good decision. We got possession of the ball. We've got a lead. Now we want to try to build on that lead. They pass uh, thrown out there again to Stutzman. Stutzman was a tight end for us, but he has uh, sprinter speed, so he's a big blocker, and we play him on the outside. Here again to uh, Kevin Bonner, and I'm telling you, if he doesn't step out of bounds, that's going to be a pretty good foot race between those two guys. But that, again, is another uh, type of play-action pass that has been successful. We also had uh, over 230 yards in rushing, uh, just like this right here with uh, Joe, 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 and uh, 230 yards passing, so we had an excellent day offensively. We did control the clock a lot of the time. So we were playing a great football team, and here on the first and 15, we had a penalty. We uh, did hurt ourselves with penalties quite a lot. David Mims uh, makes a very good effort right here, except uh, a good high number of yardage. Sets us up in a position to try to make that first down. In motion, we have a mix-up in the backfield, and uh, as I explained earlier, uh, usually that ends with disastrous results as it did there. So now it's a third down, that was second down, and the ball is uh, thrown, but we did not make the first down. Miles couldn't get back in bounds, stay in bounds. So now we're uh, going to kick a field goal. Uh, this will give us a 13 to 7 lead if we can put it through the uprights. Jeff Island kicking, Kent Brentham holding. Offensive line, uh, our starting offensive line works the front up there. Uh, I thought both of our tackles uh, played well, and also uh, Matthew Gant uh, came in and worked with those tackles. Albert Fontenot making a good uh, play on the sideline, but we get a 15-yard penalty, and, and rightly so, and uh, that uh, certainly helped them move the ball forward. With 32 seconds left uh, in this third quarter, Santana Dotson and uh, Robin Jones and uh, also Marcus Lowe defensively. I mentioned Hafford a while ago, uh, Lachey Maston, uh, those three linebackers really played well. And uh, I felt overall that uh, we did an excellent job, our conditioning was good. We got a clip right there, and uh, it went undetected, about the three yard line. So they get the score, they kick the extra point, and it's 14 to 13. Baylor starts on a very impressive drive. JJ Joe making a big play right here. That was a fine catch. It was a tip ball and a fine catch by McKenzie. Who's a couple yards for the first down. Throw the quarterback. And the fullback uh, straight does a great job twisting and turning and making that first down. Uh, Robert uh, had uh, 16 yards per carry in our opening game, and uh, Colorado was not going to let him out. But uh, when they uh, bottled him up, it did give us a little bit of... Uh, Options to the outside, and this again is straight over the middle. One-handed stab for the big first down. We're maintaining possession of the ball. We're moving down. The score is 14 to 13 for, uh, of course, uh, Colorado. And uh, we're trying to get down and get points on the board and win this game. We are held and they're forced to punt. But we're still in good shape if we can back them up. And here's a great job by McKenzie. Watch this tackle right here. Real good job, that's Darren Hagan, and he can fly. We had to do a great job in uh, keeping him contained. Now they're on a drive. Uh, Hagan bounces out the back, and we throw him for a loss, and uh, he uh, got a penalty there, and that certainly helped us a good bit because uh, he was so dangerous it made them have to go a long way, so they punted to us. Now we've got to drive 80 yards, get points on the board, and win. We're one point down. David Mims on a draw play, uh, picking up 17 yards. Pro 
Greg Bellamy is uh, one of our tackles that played well, and so did uh, Aurora. Another big play by David Mims. David's not all that big, but he is an excellent runner and a compact uh, individual with a lot of leg strength. Here we come with a very big play. Ball's complete. Turn up field and fumble. They alertly pick it up. Uh, the rule in college football, if the ball is fumbled uh, past the line of scrimmage, the defense can advance it, and uh, they advanced it. Now they're going to throw a throwback here to Darren Hagan, and uh, he's covered well over there by our defensive secondary. And uh, right here, we knocked that ball loose somewhere in there. The official was able to see, and he called it down. We did get the ball here, but he called the man down on the 14-yard line. We hold them subsequently, and uh, they're forced to kick the field goal. Now, we looked at this a couple of times, but uh, there's three minutes left on the clock, and uh, we uh, blocked the field goal. We'll come back and show you another shot of it. Uh, that uh, blocked field goal uh, puts us in a position to take up uh, with the ball on the 30-yard line. Of course, uh, Brian Hand uh, picked it up and carried it a few more yards. But watch it here. Santana Dotson comes in with great help from Robin Jones and, of course, uh, Marcus Lowe. The ball is is blocked and with such force that it traveled back up the field. Uh, here Brian Hand picks it up, and we don't know what Ellison's telling him right there, but uh, it may have been give me the ball, you're a linebacker and I'm a back. But uh, whatever it was, we took up with the ball on the 30. This is for a, a, a big uh, first down coming in here, and we fall short. We've got to go uh, just past the 10 yard line, get a first down. We're down to about the uh, one minute's time, something like that. Uh, we know what we have to do. Now here's for a first down, and we get in, the mo in motion. Guy's not set for a full second out here. We get the first down. It's uh, first and ten, but we're in motion. So now we uh, have a penalty. We elect to take the ball, down it, get it just inside the hash mark, and set up shop for the field goal that if we make it, uh, we will defeat the defending national champions. They, uh, have the longest winning streak in college football, and they uh, have won 23 of their last 22 football games, one of the best in the nation. The ball looks like it's going out to, to the right of the goal post, and it just hooked right back in there. Uh, here's a, a great shot of the kicker. You can see him watching it, and he knows it's in there. The holder knows it's in there. Now the referee knows it's in there. Now everybody in the stadium knows, and you can see that it was a tough time for the Colorado fans, but boy, was it a great time uh, for the Baylor Bears. Now, we still have a little work to do. There's 55 seconds left on the clock. This is a second down, 43 now, 42, 41. You see Darren Hagan uh, moving around there, but Robin Jones comes in, puts a stop on him. They only have one timeout. They have to call it now, get the clock stopped. So that means that they can't call a timeout, even if they get down close and uh, get in the field goal team. So they got to go for everything. And we're trying to back off and give him some room. This is a great throw and a great catch and uh, stops the clock down on the 50-yard line. 17 seconds to go, uh, giving anything except uh, a uh, touchdown. And uh, they pick up a few more yards, run out of bounds. There's only 11 seconds on the clock. They've got time for one more play. Remember, no timeouts. Hagan uh, drops back, drops, rolls to his left. Throws it, and uh, here's a great interception by Frankie Smith. And he takes the ball out of bounds with one second to go. And JJJ goes on the field, takes a snap, drops to his knee, and the game is over. And the uh, Baylor Bears win. Uh, Coach Bill McCartney is one of the class acts in our profession and uh, a very close personal friend. He has a great team. Last year, remember, they lost one game, went on and won the national championship. But you can't count those uh, Colorado Buffaloes out at this time. That's uh, all Baylor fans, there were 1,500 to 2,000 there, and they were happy and uh, they were loving being uh, there at the uh, stadium there in Boulder, Colorado, where the Baylor Bears won. Well, I mentioned at the outset of the show that uh, not only would you see the fans up in uh, Boulder, Colorado celebrating, but you'd see the fans there in Waco when we returned from our long flight. We were about two hours delayed and about 2,500 Baylor students and fans, all from Central Texas, including members of our great Golden Wave Band, were there to greet the team on their arrival. 
and they gave such an enthusiastic welcome that I thought you would enjoy seeing how happy and excited these folks were. We'd like to invite them and all of you out to the Missouri game this coming Saturday in Baylor Stadium. Now let's watch the excitement. 